Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I do mean over the top beautiful day here in paradise, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, here in paradise we are at Fish Eating Creek deep in the old oasis of freedom at Fish Eating Creek. It is Thursday, February 9th or 10th, but we're going to pretend like it is Sunday, February 13th, and uh, bring you, uh, I guess this is part two of my last sermon, where I'm just going to read another short chapter from one of, this is probably the, the best book I have read in about 20 years, quickly becoming in one of the top 10 books I have ever read since the day I was born, and that is this book called The Every by Dave Eggers, which is actually the sequel to a book called The Circle, which I did not read, but uh, I need to go back and, and read. But anyway, I suggest you read The Circle first, and then The Every, and uh, so... Just to set the, and if my battery goes out, I'm not going to restart this. Just to set the scene here. So, uh, what the, real briefly, the setup of this story is the main character, this woman named Delaney. Delaney is, mo is trying to topple the Every. The Every is like Google in the year 2050 this uh, so I anyway what what Dave Eggers is doing is imagining the dystopian horror of when Google and the whole cult of AI and everything uh, over the next 30 years so anyway she has taken a bus load of these little you know politically correct environmentally correct little limp Dick lefties on a uh, trip to see the elephant seals mating and a lot of times you know if you've seen those documentaries about the elephant seals about how the babies get trampled by the adult seals and it's this real horrible shit show about mother nature uh, a, an honest reflection of mother nature and of course all of these little uh, uh, these little fuzzy, feel-good little lefties working at the, at the every, meaning the little politically correct Google, absolutely horrified by this. And now they're working through their trauma of, uh, uh, of how to react to the perfectly natural spectacle of nature doing what nature does. I'm going to read one paragraph from chapter 24, then I'm just going to read chapter 25 until the battery runs out or until my friends get back from the showers. All right. <clears throat> the solutions to the beach, meaning the trip to the elephant seals, the bus, meaning the, the little all-electric vehicle that they went in, and the uncomfortable proximity to wildlife were, again, direct and increasingly extreme. Don't visit that beach was the first solution, and that was followed by close the beach. Then that was followed by don't exploit animals for our gawking pleasure, and finally, it was agreed that, here we go, humans should not be permitted near any animal in any context, which of course is the correct solution. Humans should not be permitted near any animal in any context, and that large groups of humans traveling together in 15 ton fuel burning vehicles are so obviously environmentally offensive and metaphorically ob obvious that we cannot ever be part 
of the problem again. Once again, the solution is getting humans out of the equation. The near martyred sheep was not mentioned. The psychic wounds too great and too raw, but Athena was on the minds of all. Athena was a sheep that the bus hit on the way back from the beach who ended up right after that paragraph we found out that Athena the sheep died and so chapter 25 they're having a meeting and I'm not going to be able to read the whole thing so anyway they're having a meeting with all of these traumatized little limp dick lefties who were so traumatized by watching nature in its natural state that they had to have they had to call a meeting to uh, figure out how to get over the trauma of watching Mother Nature. And this, and the guy leading the group, his name is Sylvester. Or they, they call him Sil. So Sil is the group leader trying to deal with the trauma of watching nature unfold. <clears throat> I want to build on Ramona Ortiz's brilliant stop loop presentation the other day, which I mentioned in my last round about ecotourism, an absolutely hilarious takedown of ecotourists. The perchance to dream hall was full. Delaney was in the fifth row, far to the left, as if hoping to go unnoticed, but not wanting to seem distant or disinterested. She saved a seat for Joan, who arrived as the lights dimmed. So Joan is her cohort. Uh, and the, uh, it's unclear whether Joan wants to help take down the every or not. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm, I'm going to skip ahead of their hilarious conversation. Uh, and get into the chapter. So Delaney, uh, so Delaney was trying, you know, she's trying to destroy uh, the future Google from the inside. So she had set up this whole thing with Sill, but Sill was completely uh, unaware that he was being set up as part of her subterfuge to take down Google. Anyway, let me get on with this. Delaney had engineered the buzz. She'd sent an all-campus message touting Sill's radical brilliance, and any time there was a hint of a new idea on campus, every, everyone, everyone's or people who work for the future Google, every, everyone took note, hoping to see what new ideas sounded like, what words were used to describe them, what the new idea person wore, and how they used their hands and feet, and by the way, were lucite podiums helpful. Syl was wearing a simple baby blue kilt over a powder blue bodysuit accented by what appeared to be shoulder pads and a utility belt. Around his neck, a mustard yellow Che Guevara scarf had been boldly, recklessly draped. It was as if the attention and responsibility had been his water and sun bringing him into full bloom. So uh, Sill starts off uh, the, the group. <clears throat> Quote, Ramona spoke so eloquently about the damage we're doing to the world when we travel to excess, he said, and I thank her for realigning our thinking about unnecessary movement throughout the world, which was just taking virtual reality to the extreme where people never needed to leave their houses ever again to travel to all of these eco-tourist locations is what he's talking about. The, audi the audience nodded for Ramona had become a legend and a member of the Gang of Forty <clears throat> now Delaney saw Wes. Wes is kind of her cohort. He was sitting in the front row. She had never seen him in the front row of anything. Sill leveled his heady-lidded eyes on the audience, who all but ducked. But we have to think, too, about the damage 
we do every day during much shorter and more ostensibly innocuous excursions. And we're off, Delaney thought, <clears throat> back to Sill. As some of you know, a group of us, everyone's, went on something of a field trip. He said the words, as he might say, acid colonic. And on that trip, we learned a lot. And afterwards, we thought a lot and talked a lot. And finally, we synthesized our feelings into what we see as a revolutionary action plan that just might save the planet, the threatened species of the world, and maybe humanity too. Tears of joy crowded Delaney's eyes. First, and remember this was all Delaney's uh, ideas, but they were a joke. She was hoping that these ideas would make people rebel against, uh, you know, their overlords at Google uh, was her plan. First, Syl continued, let's assume the undeniable truth of all that Ramona proposed. Elective air travel is immoral and does violence to the earth. That is impossible to deny. Yes, the room was silent with what Delaney assumed was the shock of a principle that would never again be challenged. <clears throat> Back to Sill. But there are two sides to human impact. There is the impact we have on the environment every time we leave our homes and there is the impact these excursions have on our own psyches. Both present significant risk and both are avoidable. One group came up with a term for these phenomena and how we feel about them. On screen the words impact anxiety appeared in bold white letters against an ominous red background. Impact anxiety. We have all felt it, Sill said. Anytime you take a ride share into the city to go to a new restaurant, you are committing countless crimes against an exhausted victim, our natural world. Then there is the restaurant itself, which becomes a magnet for endless, unnecessary trips by car and other vehicles. Then there's the food. How many animals died for that evening at the fashionable, fashionable new Brasserie? How many Amazonian acres were burned to create grazing land for the beef croquettes that give you a moment of fleeting pleasure? How many pesticides have been doused upon the wheat fields that make possible your senseless breadsticks? He paused for effect. The effect was significant. Then, of course, we get into our complicity with that restaurant's heedless exploitation of Guatemalan banana farmers, for example. And what of the Senegalese children sent to extract chocolate for your tiramisu? The fact is that every time we leave campus, we risk supporting exploitive, extractive, regressive, and inherently violent practices. Here, we can vet what we bring on to campus and what we use and consume. Out there, it is far more difficult, if not impossible. Much nodding took place. <clears throat> From stop and look, stop and look is, uh, you know, the, the uh, virtual reality ecotourism uh, app. Uh, from stop and look, we have realized that we have to find alternatives to all this traveling by plane and car and even by bus and train. 
by getting into that car or bus, for example, you are supporting an automotive industry that has and continues to extract untold resources from the earth. Metal ore, rubber, aluminum, bitumium. These vehicles are not made from bamboo after all. These are intensely exploitive machines that by their very existence are symbols of humanity's aggression towards its mother. <clears throat> Sill closed his eyes for effect. Delaney, worried that he might be taking this too far, looked around the room briefly and saw an audience wrapped in unquestioning Sill's eyes snapped open as if he had just gotten new signals from a more compassionate planet. Last weekend was a perfect example, he said. One of our fellow everyones, meaning Delaney, a wonderful person, by the way, had this seemingly innocent idea to bring a group of us to Point Reyes to see the elephant seals gathered there. Our group of expeditioners thought we were innocuous travelers on a solar-powered bus and thus incapable of harm, but we learned otherwise. First, the catering, you know, for their, their lunchbox catering for the trip had not been properly vetted and thus made us accessories to passive but no less significant hate crimes against the long oppressed Palestinian people and for that we can never be wholly absolved. He paused, closed his eyes again for a meaningful moment, then forged on. Second, a, he's talking about the sheep, of that Athena the sheep. Second, a beautiful creature died under the wheels of our vanity that day. You have heard about this, no doubt. This creature, who we have named Athena, was murdered by our desperate need to go, to get somewhere, to be somewhere else. He spat the predicates like epithets. We wanted to put our feet in the sand. We wanted to see the seals in person. These were animals that had not, it should be mentioned, invited us into their habitat. We took a massive machine, 15 tons of wanton privilege, and we invaded the natural domain of those seals. We did so with violence, callousness, and narcissism of a conquering army, and then on the way home, we smashed a guiltless animal named Athena into oblivion. Here, Sill had managed to find a photograph of a sheep that looked eerily like the sheep they had killed, though this sheep was alive and healthy and looked capable of intellectual rumination. We have come to the conclusion Sill said that a trip like the one we took is morally wrong and impossible to justify. Had we eschewed this trip, we would have alleviated our impact anxiety. Yes, we would have stayed here that weekend on campus, and by staying here, we would not have risked the near inevitable damage we have when we rush rec recklessly from our homes into the world. There was a vibration in the room. It seemed that the assembled audience was ready for revolution, a revolution led by a most passive and fearful human. It was all wrong, Sill said. That day, we were no better than Custer or Columbus. We should not have been there, period. And no human should have been able to get there, full stop. Applause shook the room. 
still unaccustomed to such public approval, looked momentarily frightened by the noise. Now, what can we learn and enact on a larger scale, Sill asked. Let's start with the highway, the kind of road that facilitated this uncivil destruction. With hateful eyes, the audience looked at the screen, which presented a real-time drone's eye view of an eight-lane freeway. Humans made an immeasurable mistake when we built that highway, Sill said. <clears throat> In a soft and contemplative tone, he was looking at his shoes as if he himself had invented the road and now regretted it. We made it too easy to travel great distances for our jobs and our errands and our touristic self-aggrandizement. Now, the average human in an industrialized country travels 32 miles to work, another six miles round trip to get the groceries, maybe another six miles to drive the kids to school, our living and working and exploring has been spread out irrationally, which has led to the overuse of the automobile and the bus, which has led to climate change, rising sea levels, and potentially the collapse of civilization and the end of the species. But, but, the audience laughed nervously. Sill smiled. We have the opportunity here at the Every to at least set an example. And uh, then, so what he does is uh, he, you know, he drives in the guilt tripping. Uh, uh, he, he absolutely drives in all of the environmental guilt tripping, He's trying to set up. And so the setup here is that everyone who works for the Every or for Google now has to live directly on the campus. So you've heard about them building this new campus over there in Palo Alto. Uh, we know the truth, he said. We just have to affirm it and act on it. The truth is that we should be living close enough to our jobs such that no commute is necessary, period. We should either work where we live or live where we work. And uh, anyway, so that's what I, it, anyway, it goes on. Uh, from there, uh, and, you know, to its natural absurd conclusion. But anyway, guys, I could go on and on with this book, but I have to self-aggrandize myself, uh, and, uh, now that my friends are back from the bathhouse burning up fossil fuels in the bathhouse at Fish Eating Creek. Uh, we have to head on to our next adventure, The Every by Dave Eggers. Get it. All right. All right, little dog. I got to keep the little dog on a leash about probably 60 feet from me. There's a herd of uh, giant alligators and little dog eating creek. Man, what a spectacularly gorgeous day. All right, are we ready to head down the road? All right. 